Hi, in this session we are going to look at weighted average valuation of inventory which is based upon the continuous method. Continuous method implies this way that we have to work out the weighted average cost of the inventory soon as a new addition of the inventory takes place. Meaning soon as we buy or receive any new inventory items we update the average cost. That's why it is called as continuous method. So let's have a look at few transactions which are right here for our discussion. We had 300 units of opening balance at 2. Then they received 200 more units at 2.2. Then they issued or sold 400 units. Then they received and issued and so on. So we are going to start with the opening balance. So on the 1st of December, they had 300 units. That gives us the opening balance of the inventory, 600 pounds. Then the next transaction took place was on the 7th of December when they purchased or received 200 units at 2.2. So 200 units at 2.2 giving us a total cost of 440 pounds. Now we've got the total inventory on this date like this. To 300 of the initial units plus 200 of the current purchase. Now that's where the average cost method starts. So you need to look at this carefully. Now can I say that on the 7th of this month we have a total of 500 units. Is that right? total of 500 units 300 plus 200 and we the total cost of these units is 1000 and i mean you if you are not very confident about the calculations like me you can actually use the calculator so 600 add 440, hey presto, 1040, right? Now, so we have 500 units with a total cost or value of 1040. So what I'm going to do will be, I will divide 1040 over 500 and we will get an average cost. So 500 times by 2.08 which is the average average value so did you see how did I calculate all I did was this okay this 1040 pounds divided by 500 units that gave me 2.08 okay so let me repeat it 1040 divided into 500 giving me 2.08 so this is how we calculate the average cost now rest of the procedure will be exactly the same you just keep on following me and i'll keep on filling in the transactions next transaction took place on the 8th 400 units were sold or issued so 400 units now there is only one average here so 400 times by 2.08 giving me 832 now before this issue or sale we have 500 units so out of 500 if we sold 400 units now we are left with only 100 units Is that right? Okay. So now we are moving on to the next transaction. Let's see what happens in the next transaction. 
they received or purchased 250 units so 250 units at 2.5 equals to 625 now let's update the inventory so we already have 100 units plus on top of that we purchased another 250 so we can say now on the 11th we have a total of 350 units at an average cost but we will calculate average cost using the same style as we did before and cost with the cost so 208 plus 625 the total cost of the inventory is 833 now I will divide this 833 by 350 units giving me a new average cost of 2.38 here it goes that's now the updated average cost then they issued 200 units 200 units equals to 476 so now out of 350 units if 200 have been sold now we are left with 150 units at 2.38 with a total cost of 357 okay so that's our inventory on the 14th so just a couple of more transactions left on the 17th they purchased 150 more units so remember we already had 150 and they purchased 150 more units so here we can put in the receipts 150 times 2.8 equals to 480 okay 420 sorry my mistake and then the inventory will be updated this way 150 previous units plus 150 these new units so now we can say we have a total of 300 units at a new average cost which I'm going to calculate in a minute and total value at the moment is remember add cost with the cost and units with the units so 357 plus 420 giving me a total sum of 777 Oops, put in the wrong place. 777. Now, 777 divided by 300, that gives me 2.59. Okay. And at the end, they issued 100 units leaving with me remaining 200 units at 2.59 giving me 4.5 18 dollars okay so that's how the closing inventory will be updated